Uh, ELW hymns is in the chat. You can go down there and grab that at your convenience. And since we're online, I figured we might as well do communion. Um, we weren't going to do communion outdoors, but as long as we're online, I figured we can. Um, that is what I have in the way of announcements. I think we're doing someone new to me, better as the prelude today. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and forgiveness. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. Christ have, Christ mercy. have mercy. Christ have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, Christ, have, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Dear friends, hear the good news. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ might live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 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 Earth 
Let us pray. Oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I proclaim to you, unless you've come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had in turn received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it is I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is easy to look around us right now and see all kinds of green shoots, both literal and metaphorical. You see your friends and neighbors getting vaccinated. You see people gathering together with people they haven't seen for so long. You get wedding invitations with no asterisk next to the date. It's easy to look at the world around us and see signs of new life. But once you start looking around, it's easy to see lots of other things too. You see our community members who are still out of work and facing eviction. You see people still struggling with addiction and isolation and depression. You see the same racism and xenophobia manifesting itself. And to state the glaringly obvious, if you don't have the privilege of living in a high income country, you're not gonna get a vaccination for an awfully long time. If it's easy to look at the world around us and find signs of life, it feels just as easy to look at the world and see reminders of death. Life and death aren't as separate as oil and water are. Sometimes life and death are all wrapped up with each other. They combine in ways that can be jarring and not particularly comforting. Our lives in the world we live in aren't just life or death, they're both. And so it is in St. Mark's account of the resurrection. St. Mark's account is, at first glance, strange. It isn't very long. The risen Jesus never appears. The women at the tomb are told to go tell everyone about what just happened, and they don't. And for the grammar nerds here this morning, Mark's gospel ends with a conjunction. Something like, reader, I married him because the end. It's such an abrupt ending that people in the early church started making up their own endings to the story. They started adding on stories where Jesus appears to the disciples or ascends into heaven, you know, Easter stories. They make the whole thing a little more uplifting and positive to put a nice bow on the end of the story. But if St. Mark's ending strikes us as weird, it's probably because we imagine resurrection in the wrong way. We imagine it like a kind of reversal. If we had to explain Easter in our own words, we'd probably say something like, well, it's the day when Jesus came back to life. But you notice the authors of the scriptures don't phrase it that way. Not the authors of the Gospels, not the author of Revelation, not St. Paul, not the people pretending to be St. Paul either. They say Jesus has been raised. They say he's broken the bonds of death. They say he's been given new life, but they never say he's come back to life. They're clear about that because resurrection isn't about going back. It isn't about undoing Good Friday or going back to the way things were before. It isn't about rounding up the disciples and having one more trip back to Galilee in the good old days. So even as we talk about new life this morning, we're still acknowledging death. 
Jesus has been raised from the dead, but death and its effects are all around us. Alleluia, Christ is risen, but families flee their homes. People get evicted, kids go hungry, evil goes unpunished, we get sick and we die. This isn't meant to be depressing, it's just meant to be honest. And perhaps that's why we need to hear St. Mark's account of the Easter story in particular this year. Because what we need is not a story that gets wrapped up nicely, or a cliche about hope that's based on nothing, or a look on the bright side, or we'll make it through this. My personal favorite, what if we looked at this as an opportunity? What we need is a story about what it means to have the courage to go on following Jesus in a world that's filled with both life and death. To live in the light of the resurrection, to follow Jesus, isn't to ask, act as if these things don't exist or can be undone, but to inhabit a world in which we can live as if nothing keeps us from participating in the divine life. That even in death and in its many forms, we are still in relationship with God. There's no situation that's beyond God's remaking and redemption, that our horizons and expectations are not necessarily God's. Which means for us that whenever we encounter death in any of its forms, we know that God is still present on the other side of that too. Lord knows Easter doesn't get rid of all of our problems, but it does tell us there's no situation we encounter that God hasn't been in before us. And there's no time when we can't move forward together. And to be sure that going forward isn't easy. It's easier to get cynical about the world. It's easier to think that things only become important when they affect people like me. It's easier just to want to go back to the way things were. Like the women at the tomb that first Easter morning, following Jesus out of the garden means living with some mixture of terror and amazement. Sometimes on the same day, maybe even at the same time. Jesus never promises us that living in the light of the resurrection is easy. He only promises us that it's possible. About 2,000 years ago, Rabbi Hillel once said that you should live as if the world is equally balanced between good and evil. And you should live as if your next action will tip the scale. And St. Mark tells us something slightly different that the world is balanced between life and death, but on Easter morning, Jesus tips the scale. The world might be full of life and death, and we might find ourselves filled with terror and amazement, and yet this morning Christ is risen. The tomb is empty, the scale is tipped, so follow the risen Christ into the world and flood the path of light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
invite you to unmute yourself as we join the church around the world confessing our faith using the words of the mm -hmm. apostles creed i believe in god i believe god's only son who was conceived in the holy spirit Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was Amen. Alive with the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for the power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages, reveal new possibilities, and inspire new beginnings. We pray especially this week for the people of Albania, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Croatia, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Serbia, and Slovenia. Hear us, O oh God. Give mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. If you have any other petitions, I invite you to offer those at this time. Janet. Alfred. Nita. Rick. Fred. Laura Lee. Jim. Jim. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, great. is great. Set our hearts on fire with love for you, O Christ, our God, that in its flame we may love you with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, with all our strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Keep us in communion with all the saints until we at last find our rest in you. Hear us, O God. Hear me, mercy, mercy is great. And great. <laughs> we offer these prayers in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Mm. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also, God's peace. Peace be with you all. Peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have fed us not with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And may the Lord be with you. And and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Lift them them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, our beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will, and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. <clears throat> Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father with the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Uh, our Father, Forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the Lord is good. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Jesus, 
This time we open things up for any announcements, joys, and concerns that anyone have anything they wanted to share with the congregation. I see none. There are two things I want to let you know. One is going forward, starting next weekend um, and through the spring, probably through the summer, we're going to move to having one service on Sundays outdoors. Um, It'll have Jason and Fred, it'll be heavy on music. We probably won't have communion if we're doing it out, outside, but it'll be sort of homily and a bunch of music. If the weather's bad or we have COVID issues like we did today, we'll move everything online, but uh, the website will be updated. People who are RSVP will be notified. Uh, so we have that to look forward to. The Lutheran World Relief Personal Care Kits. Thank you to everyone who's brought in donations for that so far. We were supposed to have like, I don't know, five opportunities for people to drop off stuff this week and we had one. And so I'm gonna wait a couple of weeks. And so uh, basically for the next two, two to three weeks, if you wanna bring stuff in, we'll be able to accept it during services. So that is what I have in the way of announcements. I invite you to receive the blessing. Guard of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your spirit to your praise and glory. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is risen. Thanks Thank be you. to God.
Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Happy evening.